So what we are going through today is basically um, how to render shadow mats and then um, there, there's definitely an um, advantage in exporting or rendering shadow mats if for example you have a, a very heavy scene and your environment it's fully done and you know that you will never change the environment again and your character animation is ongoing. So what's actually technically changing is just your character and the shadow casting. So instead of re-rendering the set every time, you can just re-render the set without the shadows. And if the animation is always updating, you can just render the character with its shadow. So it will be less expensive to render and it will be faster to turn around and you save the resources to re-render your very heavy set again, um, for example. But of course, there's also limitations. Um, for example, if you do not have your character in your set to cast the shadow, that will means that it does not have its reflection as well. Um, so if you were to do that separately and your your environment has reflective surface, then you need to re you need to render the reflection pass as well to to make sure everything um, ties together with your um, character. Cool. So now um, I have a very basic scene set up. Um, so I will just um, quickly go through. I have a ground plane, um, three geometries. Um, one environment light, so let me just name this the EMV light, and this is my key light, so two light source. Okay, let me just quickly um, give the light, uh, light group, so this is my key, <coughs> and this is my ENV. Okay, so now um, I have a basic scene set up, and what we need now is, okay, um, the shadow pass, but before the shadow pass, what we need is to make sure we have all the paths set up, for example, now I need my environment. Uh, oh, I'll call it the set, which, oh no, sorry. I'll just call it the ground. Okay, create a collection, and this will be my ground geometry. So I'll just put in the ground geometry into here. Okay, so now if I render here, let me just save this. Okay, if I render here, I just get my ground without the geometry is there. Okay, so this is done. Then I need my, um, for example, my geometry pass. Then I create a collection. Okay, so inside this geometry pass, I will need all my other shapes, right? So I'll put other shapes into this collection. So this will be my geo, um, geo geometry. Okay, so it's all of them. And then we will need um, another collection which is the ground okay so we'll put in the ground okay so but in this pass we only need to render the geometry without the ground but we need the ground there to be occluding the lights that you have set up in the scene right so what we need to do next is um, make sure you are viewing from the render pass select the collection okay just go to the sh any of the shape node inside Arno right click Primary visibility, create absolute override to the ground geometry. Okay, and then inside this collection, just turn off the visibility. Okay, that way, if I were to render now, I should get just the geometry and it should look exactly the same with and without the, the ground. Okay, so now if I were to comb this on top of my ground, it will look 80% correct without the shadows. So now what's missing is just the shadow. But before I proceed, let me just quickly do a save before, I mean, just in case it crash. Um, okay, so now we need the shadow pass. So we'll just create another render layer. So this will call the shadow mat. Okay, inside this shadow mat, basically, again, we need the, the collection of both of the geometry and the ground. So we'll just create the geometry collection, uh, which is this. Okay, and then again, the ground collection, which is this. Okay, but before we proceed further, let's just make sure we have all the AOVs set up. Okay, let's just go into our AOVs. Okay, so now nothing. Okay, so um, if you are, you are, you want a shortcut to create all the light AOVs instead of typing RGBA, your light group, um, 
for all your likes what you can do is you can go to you can just select RGBA okay put it into your active AOVs okay click on this arrow and go to the AOV node so you select that go to attribute editor you will see this um, like group um, attribute and then if you do the drop down you'll see that there is this global AOV okay you can just deselect that and activate all like groups so what this does it it will use um, whichever like that has the like group you will put in this RGBA and export out a AOV so instead of typing them one by one you can use this and you'll get all your likes um, AOV uh, for free okay so that's your like AOV then for example now I will need my shadows I can just scroll down and then there is this shadow AI shadow map just bring it over okay so now if I go back to my um, scene and if I just render like that let's just see what we get um, like that um, okay from here okay render okay so nothing happens right okay so first what we need uh, in this shadow pass is we don't need the visibility of all our geometries right so these three geometries in this collection we can just right click visibility create absolute override and turn off okay so now if I re render we won't get that um, the visibility of the geometries okay so what's next is we need to assign a a shadow mat shader to this um, ground and how we can do that is we can go to the ground collection okay right click um, create material override okay choose a material and you can type AI capital S shadow mat this okay once you assign that you'll see that um, there's options for you to choose you can choose a background okay we don't need the scene background we can just choose a background color and then we want our okay what we want is we want our shadow mat to be white color right so we want the shadow to be white and to to make sure we have the selection we just need to change the background color to black okay so now once we do that and we re-render again okay this is the beauty okay you see that okay although this is the beauty we can ignore this because ultimately we'll just shuffle out the shadows which will be what we have here uh, let me just minimize this okay so then we got our shadow pass so we can just com we can use this as a mat and we can grade um, them in com on top of our ground plane okay um, another advantage that we have um, exporting the um, shadow pass separately is that we can control the brightness and uh, not the brightness, yeah the shadow density like how how uh, dark is your shadow or how blur is your shadow you can do all those in post instead of baking it into a render so you have additional control and if that's the route you want to go um, so this you can do this um, to get that okay so um, what another thing that I like to do on top of this shadow pass is I like to have the occlusion um, of the geometries on the ground because sometimes even with the shadows you feel that um, the character is not grounded to the to the to the floor because there's there's this lack of occlusion um, on the on the renders so what we can do is we can output one more AOV which is the occlusion and we can use that to on top of this shadow pass and we can use that to make our renders uh, sit together more uh, on top of this shadow pass okay so what we need to do is we'll go into the render settings so I will just go into my render settings here Okay, it will be, I'll just create a custom one called occlusion. Okay, so inside this occlusion, same thing, I will just click on this select AOV node and go to my attribute editor. Okay, what we can do now is we'll assign a shader for this AOV. So inside this custom AOV, there's this shader, just click this and we want to assign a ambient occlusion. Let me remove this. Okay, assign ambient occlusion. Okay, so now if we were to re-render again, okay, and we go into the occlusion AOV, we get this. But um, if it's black on the occlusion area, it and what you need to do in Nuke later on, basically you need to invert, right? So, but since we are here, 
we can just tweak the the occlusion shader to work the way that we want. So we can just reverse this white and black. Okay, just reverse this. Okay, and we render again. So we get the occlusion. And then if we go to the shadows, we get the shadows. Okay, so that's how we can um, output all these maps. And then maybe just let's quickly um, render out this um, passes and we'll just take a quick look in Nuke, how we can put all of them together. So let me just turn off this. Okay, all this seems okay. I'll go to render, render sequence. Okay, then render from render cam and I want to choose a folder. Let me just set, then render and close. Okay, so I'll just wait for a while for the renders to be done. And then meantime, I'll just open up my nuke. Okay, then um, where's my yeah. images? Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, so if I see this, um, something tells me that my renders is is not coming out like how I want because it's creating a folders for all geometries. And if you guys remember in my some of my demos, um. What it means that it's your AOV is not merged. So you need to go into a render settings. Make sure you merge your AOVs. Okay. Now let me just um, re-render again. Okay, I'll just go to render. Render sequence. Then render and close. Okay. So meantime you'll see that it's rendering here. Okay, for some reason there's this round one in my render layer that I accidentally put in, so just ignore that. Okay, looks like it's done. I'll just go to my nuke. Okay, this is my geometry. And this is my ground. And this is my shadow map. Okay, so very simple, we can do our regular A over B. Okay, okay. so it looks 50% right. right. Then what we need to do is, um, before we merge the, the geometry on, geometries on top, we can use the shadow mat and we can shuffle out. Okay, we can shuffle out the occlusion. And we can shuffle out the shadows. Okay, so let's just name this node so we can see it clearly what it is. So now this is the occlusion and this is the shadows. Okay, so now um, okay, we can do them one by one. We can um, create a grid node. Okay. okay, we can just view the full image, add a grid to your, your ground renders. Okay, let's just work with the shadows first. Okay, and we can create the shadows. So you see, you can tweak however dense your shadow is. Um, or maybe you know, I I feel that it's too sharp now. I can just soften it with a blur. Um, so uh, it has its advantage if you want to do it in post. Um, yeah. So you can blur it. You can um make however dense you want or you can add a color to it if even if you, know, you want some colors in your shadows you can do things like that and what I mean by you feel that your your geometry is not really sitting you see it, it doesn't feel like it's sitting on the ground um, like maybe it's my blood but you still feel it's lack of some occlusion um, between the ground and the um, geometry so what we can do is we can use the occlusion pass now and then, okay, we can just create a little bit of oh, wait. Let me just double check the occlusion. Um, no, oh, I should use it. We can use a key to make sure I get its alpha. Okay, okay, so it's a luminance, luminance key. Okay, just if I view from here. And I press A, the alpha it's where I want. Okay. And then go back here. Okay. I can increase. So you see, um, let's view. Okay. 
that if I were to reduce this, you can see that um, the areas that is closer to the geometry will have a bit more of the contact than, than other areas that's further away. So this will help to ground and seed your um, geometries um, more into the scene. And if it's if it's not bright enough, what we can do is um we can push the alpha. If we if we really want to cheat it that way, we can push the alpha um a bit more, right? I mean I'm just exaggerating it um, but you you get what I mean. See, then of course this is too much um, but you can basically um increase your the alpha and you see that it helps to to push those contact points a bit darker and it, it will seat your character um, nicely or much better in your scene. Yeah, at least you see the this line is probably it's one or two pixels above the ground that's why it's not really sitting but this is not too bad. Yep, so that's the, the, the overall idea on shadow mats and how you guys can use them and render them separately if you need. And then, for example, if this ground or this background is a super high res one, um, and you are changing your your characters always, um, you will not need to render this background ever again, and just f focus on rendering your mats and your character. The mats, as you can see, it will be super fast, so it it's definitely a a pros or a, a positive steps to take if if you have a very heavy scene. Um, yeah. That's that's shadow mats for you, and thank you everyone. All right, so if this demo or tutorial is helpful to you, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to put in the comment section, and I'll reply them as soon as I have a chance to. Um, have a great evening. So see you guys in the next video.